Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna be conducting a re-registration mission in this video. As you can tell on the screens behind me, I do not have a plotting board uh, because for this, I just wanted to hone in on the formulas that we're gonna be utilizing and not so much actions on the plotting board because nothing really changes from registration. All right, uh, main reasons why we conduct re-registration are the non-standard conditions. All right, and if you see up on the screen, it lists some of the non-standard conditions that we have, your weather effects and equipment wear. All right, and then also another one being four hours since we last conducted a registration mission. All right, so those are really your big ticket items for a re-registration mission. All right, so based on these two methods, all right, you have MET and you have re-registration. So these are the two ways that you can compensate for your weather effects and equipment wear. Obviously, as you can see up here behind me as well, your MET determination and application is the least preferred and your re-registration is the most preferred just based on um, how long it takes to do both of those. And then it tells you a little bit about each of them. So re-registration, you're taking into account both your weather effects and equipment wear. All right, so that is compensating for all non-standard. As far as MET, all you're doing is accounting for your weather. All right, so no equipment wear, strictly weather for MET application and determination. All right, obviously your tactical situation is, is going to dictate, just like anything else, on what method you end up choosing but for this, we're gonna be covering re-registration. All right, so for my data sheet, nothing changes from registration. I still have my grid intersection of 0159, same location for a mortar. Uh, my mounting azimuth of 3650 with a referred deflection of 2800. All right, so all the steps for firing a re-registration mission. Just like registration, it's a standard grid mission until you get registration complete. That second bullet there says fire the re-reg at the established RP using the only mortar that originally fired the registration. All right, so in my case, I had two gun, was the one who fired my registration. Therefore, when I compute this data for re-registration, two gun is the only one firing, all right? So you're only establishing data for the gun that fired your registration. All right, when it comes to initial chart data for re-registration, a lot of people overthink this, but your initial chart data is the same as the initial registration. And then you're adding the range correction from your registration to get your new command range, which I'll cover here in a second, all right? Surveyed firing chart, that registration point did not move, therefore your initial chart data remains the same, and I'll explain that here when we get into the computer's record. So for your registration, you compared initial chart to final chart for both deflection and range. All right, now for re-registration, all right, we're comparing initial chart range to final adjusted range, and I'll explain how to get your final adjusted range compared to your final command range, all right? Words have meaning, we'll get there. All right, that's going to give you your new range correction for re-registration. Now, for deflection, you're comparing your initial chart deflection to your final command deflection to get your new deflection correction for re-registration. Once we have those, we'll get our new range correction factor as well. All right, so once again, your initial registration, it's initial chart to final chart for both deflection and range. Now re-registration, you're comparing initial chart range to final adjusted command range or final adjusted range far, depending on how you want to sway that acronym. All right, and then for deflection, initial chart deflection to final command deflection. All right, so those are the two biggest things when it comes to re-registration and how we're going to apply those to this mission. All right, so onto our computer's record. Now we are re-registering RP1. All right, our OT direction remains 
3800. Our target description is still our P1. We move into our FTC order. Remember, mortar to fire for effect. I have number two gun because number two gun was the one who adjusted my registration mission. All right, so he is going to be the only one firing this entire time. So number two gun one round, our basis for correction because we already shot registration. Now we're bringing it over. Basis for correction, RP1. HE quick, when ready. All right, so like I said, initial chart data from registration pulls into re-registration. All right, so I'm pulling my initial chart deflection from registration of 2790. Now the only thing that I need to keep in mind here is now I have my deflection correction because I have my basis for correction. All right, so my deflection correction of left 11 from my registration, which I'll apply to my initial chart range to get my command deflection or correction. I'll apply to my initial chart deflection to get my command deflection down here. I have my initial chart range from registration. Now, because my target did not move, my vertical interval and my altitude correction remain the same. All right, so I still have a positive 550. I still have a positive 275 for my altitude correction. Now with this, I'm going to pull my range correction over from registration of positive 125. Now that I have that positive 125, just like you do every other follow-on mission after registration, you need to get your total range correction. So, range correction, altitude correction, apply to get my new total range correction of positive 400. So once again, I took my range correction from registration, I took my altitude correction, I applied the two to get my total range correction. And you'll see how that works out here when I compute my initial fire command data. All right, so that gives me a command range of 3550. What you notice if you're comparing your computer's records from registration to re-registration, the difference is going to be the command data that you have, just because now you have a total range correction initially where you didn't in registration, all right? So if I bring everything over from my initial fire command, I have mortar follow, number two gun, HE quick, one round. Now, like I said, I'm applying this deflection correction to my initial chart deflection to get my command deflection. I'll see, you'll see exactly where I'm getting this information if you want to check your, the math that you're applying. All right, charge seven, and now my elevation reflects off of my new command range of 3550. All right, now if you look at two guns hit data on registration, you'll notice two gun had a deflection of 2801, charge seven, elevation 0968. All right, and the reason being is because you, without knowing it, already had your range correction because that's what you found at the end of your formula for registration. And now you're just reapplying it to re-registration with your altitude correction to get your total range correction. All right, so that is two guns hit data at the end of registration, which becomes two guns very first initial fire command for re-registration. All right, so two gun gets up on that data, data he hangs and fires, and now we're standing by in our OT direction of 3,800. We're bringing our deflection correction of left 11 and our total range correction of positive 400 down just so we understand to apply those to every chart data from here on out. All right, so he gives us our correction of right 50 and drop 100. Like I said, I don't want this class to focus on the plotting board because this is basic adjustments on a surveyed firing chart. You would apply those get a new chart deflection of 2780 and a chart range of 3050. All right. 
I'm not fire. I'm not changing my method of fire, right? So I'm just adjusting for registration. So my mortar of fire method of fire does not change. I need to apply my deflection correction to my chart deflection to get a command deflection of 2791. I'm applying my total range correction to my chart range to get a command range of 3450. All right, now I get my corresponding elevation for a command range of 3450 of 1005. All right, two gun gets up on that data, he hangs and fires. Now we're standing by again at our OT direction of 3800. Our observer comes back with at 50. All right, we're going to apply that at 50 and get a new chart deflection of 2777 and a chart range of 3100. All right, just like before, we're applying those deflection corrections and total range corrections to get a command deflection of 2788 and a command range of 3500. All right, corresponding elevation for 3500 with the 300 series ammo is 0987. Two gun gets up on that data, he hangs and fires. Once again, standing by our OT direction of 3800. All right. Now observer comes back with an emission registration complete. Now that we have all this new data, we can go ahead and apply it to our re-registration formulas to obtain our new deflection correction, range correction, and range correction factor for re-registration. All right, so for our deflection correction, once again, I said initial chart deflection to final command deflection for re-registration. All right, so now we need to figure out if our initial chart deflection is larger than our final command deflection or if it's smaller than our final command deflection. So our initial chart deflection was 2790. All right. And our final command deflection is 2788. We need to compare the two and we determine our initial chart deflection is larger. So we can plug those into our formula, do our subtraction, the 2790 minus 2788 gives us a two. Because we subtracted in mills, Lars left add right subtract, that becomes a right two for our deflection correction. So now we have a new deflection correction for re-registration as right two. Moving on to our range correction for re-registration. All right, that big note here up at the top. Our final adjusted range is simply just our final command range without our altitude correction included. All right, so all we're going to do is reverse the sign of our altitude correction, remove it from our final command range to get our final adjusted range. So our Initial chart range of 3150 and our final command range of 3500. Now I said we need to take our altitude correction of positive 275 and reverse that sign and remove it from the equation. All right, so I'm going to take, just like it's saying here, I reverse my sign, now I have a negative 275. And I'm going to apply that to my final command range to get a final adjusted range of 3225. All right, now I have my final adjusted range and I can bring it back and compare it to my initial chart range. I determine my initial chart range is smaller, so I can input it into my formula with my final adjusted range of 3225, my initial chart range of 3150. I do my math and I get a difference of 75, because my final adjusted range is larger, I grew in range still, I added in range, my range correction becomes a positive, all right? So now I have a deflection correction for re-registration of right two, and I have a range correction for re-registration of positive 75. Now I have my range correction, I can get my range correction factor. All right, so I'm taking my initial chart range of 3150. Just like we did beforehand, I need to round that to the nearest 100, express in thousands, 
to get 3.2. Once I have that, I'm bringing it down and I'm taking that new range correction of positive 75 and I'm dividing 3.2 from it to get a 23.4, rounded to the nearest whole number, becomes my new range correction factor. Now my range correction was a positive, so this, let me back up. This range correction is a positive. Range correction factor is a positive. All right, so positive 23. Now that I have my new deflection correction, my new range correction, and my new range correction factor, I can go ahead and apply that to all of my previous mission data on my data sheet. All right, so as, as you see here, this is my registration. This is my follow-on mission that I did. And now I'm conducting a re-registration, so I'm gonna update the information for both of these targets. All right, so I have registration point one and Charlie Hotel 0050, I'm bringing those down and I'm going to apply the necessary information. All right, so my grid has not changed. My altitude for both targets has not changed. My initial chart data has not changed. So the only thing that's going to change here now is my fire correction because I got a new deflection correction and range correction. All right, so my altitude, like I said, right here does not change, which means my vertical interval and altitude corrections do not change. All right, so now I can apply my new deflection correction and my new range correction for my re-registration mission. All right, there's something I have to do that's a little bit different for this follow-on mission because now I have to get a new range correction fat or a new range correction for this target. So I'll continue on with my command data. So for registration, I had that command deflection of 2788, command range of 3500, charge 7, elevation 0987. My intel of RP1, my method of engagement was number two gun, one round HE. All right, remember two gun was just one round adjustments the entire time, no fire for effect or anything. All right, my surveillance or my VDA is registration complete and I expended three HE rounds total. All right, now I need to figure out what my new range correction is for this follow on mission that I did Charlie Hotel 0050. So I'm going to take that new range correction factor of positive 23 that I just computed for my re-registration and I'm going to compare it to my initial chart range for this mission of 3125. Now I'm going to round that to the nearest 100 expressing thousands to give me 3.1 and I'm going to multiply that 3.1 by my new range correction factor which gives me 71.3. Round to the nearest whole number, it gives me 71. My range correction factor was a positive, therefore my new range correction for Charlie Hotel 0050 is positive 71. Now that I have those two, I can go ahead and update my firing data for Charlie Hotel 0050. All right, so I have a new command deflection of 2720, a new command range of 3600, charge 7, with the corresponding elevation of 0948. All right, so once again, to get that 3600, I had to take my range correction of positive 71. I have an initial chart range of 3125. My altitude correction of positive 400. So 471, apply that to 3125. Round it to the nearest whole number, or nearest 25, correction, nearest 25 to get 3500. Or sorry, 3600. 
I misspoke. So once again, positive 71, positive 400. I apply the two to get my total range correction for this mission of positive 471. Apply that to this chart range of 3125. Round it to the nearest 25 gives me 3600. All right, with a corresponding elevation. All right, if I have any questions over a re-registration mission, please feel free, like always, to hit me up on YouTube or Instagram, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can.